Overdrive, I am very pleased to welcome uh, Jamie from Code Orange uh, here today with us for a, a talk about this awesome new album, The Above, which has just been released and it's an absolute fucking face melter. Jamie, how you doing? Lovely to I'm have you on. Oh, thank you, man. I'm doing well. I'm a little, a little under the weather, but I'm doing good. We had a, we had a hard weekend grinding, but uh, I'm excited, man. I mean, honestly, congratulations on this album. It is, it is just absolutely incredible. Was there like a, a real conscious decision to just cut off any sort of restrictions and just creatively just go wherever you want to go? Um, I think that it's all for us growing seeds that have been planted over time, you know? So I think in a lot of ways we're on a linear path, but it's um, the path widens and widens and widens, you know? So there's a lot of connective tissue with everything that we've done but we also wanted to um, just express creatively what we hope would be out there, that we don't feel like is out there in this exact way. Um, just the album titles, there, there's no particular link between underneath and the above, it just so happened that way. It's not like a continuation of some kind of a concept or anything. No, it is a continuation. For All sure. right. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, they're, they're their the records are in a lot of ways. I mean, really, all four records kind of form one statement in a way. It's you know, I am king forever underneath the above. But yeah, underneath the above, really, and the above are kind of divided by almost a thin reflective line. You know, and musically, they represent in different ways. But underneath has this really outer digital exo, you know, or this digital shell, um, and. The Aboves has more of a digital backbone and it's more human, and even though it's a little bit, um, it's in some ways real and, and human, but a little bit off, you know? Like as represented on the cover, it's somebody wearing a skin mask, you know? And you can just kind of see their eyebrows are just a little bit odd and there's a little bit of a slit where you can see their real face. So there's kind of like this idea of illusion. There's this idea of like the thin reflective line between love and hate, between inner acceptance and outer adoration. You know, so they're very much brother sister albums thematically, and all these albums kind of create one big circle of a journey. Speaking of of the discography, everything that prior to this album, do you feel that this was kind of the initial? dream of, of what you had when you started Code Orange or do you still do you feel that you're you've still creatively got a more distance to go to I guess scratch that itch of what you really kind of wanted it to be when you were starting out? I don't think when we started out we could have imagined it coming out this way at all but I at the same time believe that we plant seeds and we don't know exactly where they're what they're going to grow into but we plant them purposefully and we've been planning them purposefully. And we've been building a foundation of a house that builds up and up and up and up. And that can kind of only go so far. To me, that bit, to me, this record is not the completion of Code Orange, but it's the completion of this journey of Code Orange in a lot of ways, you know? And I think that the next version of it would, at this point, and I could change how I feel about this for sure, but I feel like the next version of it would have to, you know, we would have to open a different door and, and, and think about it in a different way. But I think thematically, musically, artistically, this feels like a circle. And that's why, you know, the very last sound you hear on the album is the very first sound you hear on our first album. You know, it creates a Loop. And, and, and obviously people will know that back in 2021 you came out from behind the kit to to front of stage to vocals was that always something that you thought could possibly happen way back uh, were you or was it kind of like a, a decision of okay we're gonna have to do this were you I guess my question is even years ago were you saying yeah this is potentially something that we're gonna have to do down the line but right now I'll I'll just stick to what I'm doing? Uh, I don't think it was really at the forefront of my mind. I mean, when I was really young, it was something I was interested in doing, and then I fell into my position here, and I loved it, 
and then the music just called, you know, two things called for it. The music called for it, and, you know, our connectivity with the audience live felt like it was starting to taper, and that called for it as well. So it felt like the perfect storm. We also like to freshen it up. When it kind of clicked in my mind that it could be a really cool way to freshen it up, and we can work that into the videos, which we did, and work that into the life cycle of the album, that made it even more appealing. So it just made all the sense in the world. I think I've watched it about eight times now, possibly more. Just that that outbreak show, holy fuck, man! It just the vibe of that is. If anything, I, I, it just makes me want to rip open the screen, climb through, and just be there. And there's not many things that make me want to feel like that, but the awesome. energy, oh my God, just fantastic. Um, well, that show was really the apex of, especially, you know, now we're kind of moving into a different phase that's kind of caught in between, but it's the apex of what I imagine in my dream world rock shows can be, which is like, for us, we have the full visual identity. We have the screens, we have all of our visual elements we love, you know, the lighting, the theatricality. The theatricality's there, right? But then the chaos element is there, the chaos factor. The fans are a part of the show. And even the way they built the stage, there's a stage in front so they don't disrupt the musical part of the show. It was the perfect everything, even the venue. I think it's one of the best fests we've ever done. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about it. It's the best fest, honestly, in a lot of ways. In the, in the way that it's, for us, it's geared for somebody like us. And it was the ideal show. For yeah. those that don't know, Billy Corrigan is on the album. He's on Takes Shape. And I know that you had said that it came from just sort of meeting in mutual circles and you guys, just it was just a lovely organic kind of thing that, that came together. With regards to that song, was that song written with Billy in mind or was it something that sort of you wrote at, whilst you guys were talking about the idea? It was not written with him in mind, but when you know the opportunity came up, even when we went in to work with him, him being on, it wasn't necessarily a thought. We were just kind of statting over a section of the song, and then we knew we wanted a feature on that song, and it was the perfect one, and it came together. And our whole career has been an upward trudge, and this felt like it flowed pretty easy. You know, so it was a beautiful thing, man. He's just a total legend. Yeah. Right, you are a, definitely a band that is, you're not afraid of work. And my God, have you, you've busted your fucking asses over the years, blood, sweat and tears. You've played shows just about everywhere in any kind of venue, from basement house parties with all sorts of bands right up to what you guys are doing now. Yeah. Um, and what I particularly love is the frustration from other media and press where they just don't know what to do with you or like what genre are they we need to fit them in a and it's like the, the great thing is you are not like anything else there is no other kind of sound out there like you guys at the moment Thank you. And is that something that you find um, amused is probably the wrong word but does it does it spark an interest to see people struggling to try and justify and, and lay some type of a fingerprint or a blueprint down on what code orange actually is yeah, I think that at times it like kind of it seems to at times piss some people off or frustrate some people. Yeah. Um, I mean, the goal is literally at this point to do that exact thing. So, I mean, culturally, we are like a hardcore band in terms of where we come from and what our culture still is to this day in the, that scene. But I mean, I can't think of one hardcore band or metalcore band or whatever that really has a ton in common with us at this point. We've never really fit in. We never really fit into that. We never really, we don't really fit into the radio rock world. We don't really fit into like the ultra art world. We don't really fit into um, the super extreme world, but yet we do it all. And I think we do it all very well at a high level. So I think that's exciting and cool. I think there are people out there that think that's exciting and cool. And I think there are other people that, because while we, we, while we are in a world now that people say is open and accepting to different things, I find that, and this is reflected in the bands that are currently the most popular, I find that the things that people like the most are the things that they can pin into to something, especially in rock music. You know, I think a lot of the rock bands that are newer, that are the most popular, our bands that you can describe in about one sentence. That doesn't bode well for us, but it's our goal to put something out there that's not there, and what we're doing is not there, in our opinion. 
Okay, so outside of creating music, are there any, like for you, are there any other plans to do something associated with Code Orange, but just not necessarily music or performance related? Well, Shane and I have like a production kind of company, loose term now that, you know, the last music video we did called Mirror, me, Shade, and another guy named Eric Robbins. We made the entire video, we directed it, we edited it, we animated it, we did every single piece of it. On the Take Shape video, we did as well with Max Moore, killer director. But so now we're on the path with that, it's called Nowhere to Run, which uh, sometimes in our songs in the past, you've heard a little tag that says Nowhere to Run. It's like kind of been almost like hip hop style, our producer tag. And so we are kind of using that as a collective to make music, to make music videos, to hopefully make films in the future, to make clothes. And, you know, we've done a hip hop song for an artist called Backwash, who's a really killer artist from Canada. We had, a, we produced a song on their record. Um, we have done, you know, stuff for Paps Blue Ribbon in the past. We've done animated visuals for Scary Pool Party, Nothing Nowhere. Uh, we've done all the, a lot of the Code Orange stuff, and now we're in full scale music video making production mode as well so yeah we'd love to take on some projects from some other people and we feel we have a lot of creativity to offer in that way and we have all the tools you know other members of the band have are also insanely capable and talented and pretty much every single one could be running their whole own ship like truly so i think you'll see a lot to come i think that we've all been so tunnel focused on this that it's kind of like a weird time especially because we're not going right on the road we've had a couple months before we go on the road um that it's like, what do we do with ourselves, you know? So, but knowing us, we're not gonna fucking sit on our hands. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just want people to discover this album right now. That's what's the most important to me. Excellent. Yeah. Well, listen, I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, thank you so much, um, Jamie, for speaking to us here at Overdrive, and congratulations on this amazing new album, The Above, which is out now. And please get your hands in it, buy a physical copy, and go to your record store and order it because it is just fucking fantastic. So thank you so much, Jamie, I appreciate it. I appreciate that a lot, thank you so much. Excellent.